All right, so I know you guys have seen me use a bit of uh, B-roll in the background now from Borderlands, you know, 3. And now I think it's finally time I actually make a video about the Borderlands series, even if it's a pretty short one. You know, considering I've been playing a bit of the game, obviously, I actually just really just want to talk about it in general. And honestly, after replaying it, I've noticed that honestly, Handsome Jack really is one of my favorite and probably the best villain ever for like a bunch of different reasons. And honestly, the cast in general from Borderlands 2 is just phenomenal, especially compared to Borderlands 3, although they, they still have some pretty good characters in there. And you know, that I, I will mention that later, but you know, for now, Borderlands 2 is going to be the main focus. Um, I don't know if I got sick again, but you know, college maybe there was some like spore spreader in the gym or something or like uh, in, uh, somewhere, but I, I'm cooked. So, um... I'm gonna be sounding a little different when I make this video, so yeah, sorry, uh, hope you guys are okay with that. Uh, you know, anyways, back to the point. I'm just gonna be analyzing a Handsome Jack and what made him so special and beloved by the community and what made him such a nuanced and yet so amazing vil- such an amazing villain, I mean. Oh my god, my brain is- <sighs> Well, you know, whatever. I hope you guys just really enjoyed this video, and yeah, as usual, subscribe if you guys want. I, I don't really care. <laughs> You know, a large part of why people really like Handsome Jack is that he was extremely funny and very sarcastic and absolutely chaotic. I mean, my dad, brother, and friend all said the same things about him. He was funny, he had a great, he had this voice, tone, diction, and what he was saying in general was written in an amazingly well way and he was cast really good too. His personality was just like sarcastic again and funny, but it had this heavy dose of psychopathy and like delusion in it, I guess you could say. Like he was an awful person, but even when he did awful things, he was still really funny and had some absolutely memorable moments. The jokes he said were actually very, well, I wouldn't say they were, you know, high bar, but they were clever and very, and phrased pretty well sometimes. I mean, sometimes they were immature, but you know, still pretty clever if you ask about me. You know, his joke about buying a horse made of diamonds and stuff, and it's like, butt stallion, like honestly, that still makes me laugh to this day. It's just such a goofy, such a random, like, it's such a fun joke, and it's not even some of his best stuff, you know. Sometimes he's in more of a casual scenario, and you can hear him just doing other things and, like, eating food, you know, like he's eating pretzels in the starter Borderlands 2 and things like that. Or, you know, sometimes he talks to other people and stuff like that, too, and you can hear that in the background. And that just kind of builds out his, like, very carefree-ish nature in a way. He has a very carefree, he isn't like in a, in a tight little area just talking to you and only you. He still has this environment around him that also helps build out the world in general. I will say though, sometimes he's very direct with what he's trying to say and he's just trying to make you, he literally will tell you to like kill yourself and things like that. But when he, 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 when you know, there's a mission where you actually can kill yourself and he just was like, he yells at you, he's like, you're a sellout, everyone's gonna hate you, everyone's gonna call you a bitch, things like that. And he just makes fun of you and it is pretty funny. And you know, sometimes he's just doing the most random things ever, like pretending to be the guy he just killed and his image shows up in the corner and honestly that made me laugh pretty hard. I mean, it, it was very tragic, the character's death, but you know, it was still really, really funny. And you know, the, interestingly, like, despite the fact that he's a really, really funny villain, he's still very menacing. I mean, he's killed so many innocent people and has so much money and resources and makes sure you're very aware of it. He does a lot of things to scare you, like the whole like sanctuary thing when you're about level 13-ish or so. And you know, in general, he's still a threat and make sure you're aware of him being a threat. And that's what makes his per personality just so much better, the juxtaposition between his scary and funny side, but they both come together and just make him such a great character. The other really, really, really fascinating and interesting part is his backstory. If you don't know, Handsome Jack is the living embodiment of die a hero or live long enough to see yourself becoming the villain. And honestly, in general, he's a shockingly nuanced villain, especially with regards to his daughter Angel and his whole backstory with his first wife and second wife and things like that. For example, he was abused as a child apparently by his grandmother and it would sort of build, it would be something that would really push him to become a psychotic, deluded maniac later in life, obviously. And if you don't know, he has a daughter named Angel, who I just mentioned, and he really, you know, when he had a wife and things, and he really wanted to protect Angel after she, you know, because she has these powers and she's a siren, and so she accidentally kills her mom in an accident. And so, you know, he, he really cares about her. And so, you know, he, he protects her and he's like, I want to protect you because I love you and I want to protect the world too because you can be very dangerous. And so he was really nuanced in that sense because in general, like he would, he really wants to protect her. Like you see him throughout the entire course of the game, not give a, not give anything, any care to any human life, but his daughter. And that his daughter is literally the one person he truly cares about 
to like the bottom of his heart and his wife too obviously who ended up passing away but it, it's such an interesting <clears throat> my god i'm so oh my god it's so interesting because it's the one character he does really care about and it just juxtaposes again with his personality about not caring about human life and seeing it as expendable in general you know you could you also watch him like slowly de decline mentally in the pre-sequel and stuff when you're actually learning about him and also still caring about his own daughter and it's just such, so interesting to watch him decline and realize that he's becoming insane and then he could develops like this hero complex of, of like a sort and he's kind of thinking he's doing the right thing by colonizing pandora and trying to take over kind of like the british thinking they were doing the right thing by colonizing a bunch of like places in africa when they were obviously in the wrong to us but to them they were like you know we're doing the right thing same with america they did the same thing you know and it's it's very interesting to watch this develop his overall backstory and also again his later things in the later games like you'll see him like you know and you know he'll come back up and you know the jackpot dlc for borderlands 3 and stuff but in general his overall backstory and how it affected his character and his hilarious personality but also completely psychopathic and delusion like crazy personality was just actually extremely compelling and honestly it's interesting because you actually kind of sympathize for him a bit because it's clear that he wasn't born a bad person he just had a lot of bad things happen to him and it caused just a mental decline like i low-key felt bad for him especially when you learn about how tragic all of the angel stuff was and how much he really cared about Angel and all of these like very tragic events and he's an absolutely fantastically written character in my eyes honestly when it comes to his background because it makes you sympathize with a psychopath in a sense it almost humanizes this awful person especially again with Angel. Angel's just such a tragic part of the game honestly it just made me feel really bad for him and it's just very fascinating and interesting and that's kind of why I just really find his backstory so compelling. Alright, so I'm talking about a Borderlands 2 villain, and I guess Tales of the Borderland if you really want to factor that into there. So what does Borderlands 3 even have to do with this? Well, you know, when you play Borderlands 2 and Borderlands 3 back to back, kind of like I did a while back, you realize how amazing and how effective Handsome Jack was on making your playthrough absolutely memorable. You see, in Borderlands 3, Tyreen and Troy are the main villains, they're sirens, and they're just sirens with daddy issues, literally, and they just, they're like streamers, you know, like they're freaking streaming their stuff on the Echo Net, and literally, like, they're actual kick streamers, you know, they just do awful things for views and try and take over, like, people's brains and stuff like that, which is, you know, kind of funny, I guess, the parallels, like, they predicted kick streamers, I guess, like, horrible kick streamers. Anyways, their backstory is pretty simple, they killed their mama's kids on accident, so then their poor dad, Typhon de Leon, who's a famous vault hunter, just had to suck it up, deal with it, protect them, and tell them stories about being a vault hunter, and said, hey, you can't go out in the world, it's very dangerous, people are gonna try and manipulate you, and so then they were just like, oh my god, that sounds, being a vault hunter sounds so cool, Typhon de Leon, you know, because you're the first vault hunter, so we're just gonna make a call and stream murder and try to open vaults so we can be stronger, because my siren ability is, like, leeching people's power and crap like that, and, like, low-key, it's not as compelling as Handsome Jack. Now, sure, backgrounds aren't as important, but what's worse is that they weren't even funny, like, they were just kind of sarcastic and told you to kill yourself and didn't really say anything amusing in general. There were very, very, very few moments that were anything memorable from uh, Tyreen and Troy. Like, there's, like, you know, for, there's a reason that Handsome Jack has multiple videos dedicated to his absolute best moments across Borderlands 2. And finding one about Troy and Tyreen is hard, it's, and that's literally just because they were just not as funny. And they were, they lacked a lot of that same comedy and sarcasm that Handsome Jack did. And I mean, yeah, they're different characters, but they still could have had that same personality that i mean we didn't expect another handsome jack but we still wanted you know someone who was funny and memorable and tyreen and troy were just kind of people with daddy issues who were just kind of annoying and just lived in the background i think there were plenty of better characters written than them like you know i think uh wainwright and you know freaking hammerlock were amazing and things like that i just don't think that um i don't think that tyreen and troy were that good in this game and they just and they really just emphasize how amazing handsome jack is at making a playthrough memorable as i mentioned earlier honestly all in all i just found handsome jack to be an extremely good villain as you know hopefully you know you kind of realize now that he's just very well written i mean if you literally just go watch any funny moments of handsome jack you'll realize what makes him so funny and then you look at his backstory and then you also see why what makes him such a nuanced character Hopefully in Borderlands 4, which is, you know, coming out next year, they have an equally effective one unlike Borderlands 3. And, um, that's all I really had to say about, you know, Handsome Jack. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, you know, I don't really talk about, uh, you know, you've seen me play Borderlands plenty of times, so I thought, you know, hey, maybe I can talk about it for, for a change. So, yeah. Anyways, see you guys.